Hi everybody, Cheaply Chic. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited to share my fall journal release for my Etsy shop with you guys. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. I have been working so hard on these. For those of you who are friends of mine here on my channel, you know that I'm a summer girl, but I do love fall. I love the changing of the season. I love the fall colors. I love watching everything out in nature. That's really the road that I went with my journals. My thought with these are, I'm getting them up and listed just in time for October. I know there's a lot of people here that enjoy doing October daily. This would be perfect for them. But my thought is, personally with journaling, I would use it for the whole season through the months of October and November to keep track of all of those fun memories. I have a lot of things that happen in November family-wise, as I'm sure you guys do too. So that's my thought with these. Why stop at October? You can take it through November if you're interested. So as far as the colors go, they're very fall, rustic. When I think of autumn, I think of harvesting. That's the little harvester girl here on this cover. I had a lot of fun with these and I think because I love that theme so much, that's kind of why I went crazy and made a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the journal. Okay, so I'm going to start with the three large journals that I made. These measure eight and a half long by five and a half wide. It's a normal book size. The binding is two and a half inches and there are four signatures stitched in here. And all three of those are the same. For the closure, I found this chicken wire ribbon-like a spool at Hobby Lobby oh my gosh in the craft aisle of the fall things like in the items to make wreaths and stuff and I thought oh my gosh I have to find a way to incorporate that into the journals so it is a little thinner than regular chicken wire so it's easier to work with and it has this gold plated color on the outside I'll just go ahead and get into this first journal and share this closure with you. So this journal, like my heirloom journal, I used an old feed sack. I'll talk about that more in a minute for those of you who haven't seen that. I just have a little clip attached to some coffee dyed seam binding. I made this extra long. It wraps around a couple times so in case you had photos it will still close and it would still be pretty cool even if it were full. So. So here is the chicken wire closure. I just have some of the feed sack material folded over those very pokey edges as you can tell I had a run in with. <laughs> I used some Fabri-Tac glue and closed it in there and then did some like rustic hand stitching around the edges. I used an eyelet and then attached my coffee stained seam binding. So that is my closure for the large journals and I think it is so much fun. So for those of you who haven't seen my heirloom journals, this feed sack is what I used. I actually have one more that I haven't used. I'm so excited. So it's an old feed sack. It does have staining and whatnot on the cover because it was actually used <laughs> and put to work. So that's a lot of fun. And then on the inside I have more of the feed sack. So that's what's all the discoloration is here. I love the way that it just kind of lays every which way like a feed sack would if it was full of items. It has a little bit of fringe here and then I've stitched it and it's adhered really well down to the book board so it won't be going anywhere. Okay so getting into the book there are four signatures. Um, I didn't do a final count. I like to count one more time before I say how many pages are in the book. There will be in the Etsy listings for these journals I will say how many pages. So here in the front of this journal I used this old hand stitched piece. I believe it was a curtain and I know that it was um, hand stitched because it wasn't finished when I picked it up so I think it is awesome I love the colors here so I made it into a pocket with some burlap here on the back I've hand stitched on the laces at the top and then you can just put whatever keepsakes in there you would like to I used a lot of Edith Holden pages throughout the book and I just couldn't bring myself to do anything to them <laughs> they are from the months of November and October 
and I just love reading it so I left it there for you to read if you want to do something with it you could easily take this into a pocket and put some things there or whatever but I just love the colors and the way that those match together so throughout the book I have some more of this old netting that was part of a curtain I use a doily in this book I use some fabric leaves throughout and some trims lots of machine stitching and some stamping as well the images that I use I think they are from the old design shop I'll have links down below because I picked up a lot of free ones that she shared which I think is great 99.9% .9 of all of the tags in here are backed with tea stain paper as well there's a pocket and here's just a tag that I made with a pocket on the front and I use this little Anya stamp that I have she is my favorite for fall I love her little latte cup so I had to put her in each of the journals because she is my favorite <laughs> Some graph paper, lots of machine stitching. Again, I like the rustic farm look for autumn, so I just had a lot of fun with that. Some of the heart-shaped paper, and I did add a lot of burlap throughout the journals, some trim. I thought this would be a great place to mat a couple photos. Some ledger paper and a belly band. Center of this signature. Here is a vellum-fronted pocket. And another tag that I made this is also a pocket and then that would be a great place for a photo and here is a vintage button all of the large journals have some vintage buttons and I just use some journaling cards throughout and there will be an extra bag of goodies that comes along with these journals. This just tips out. Some more fun trims and a great place for photos. The other side of that pocket here, you can add the doily in the signature. I'll have to flip through these a little bit quicker or this video will take all day and none of us <laughs> have time for that. So some more ledger paper. I added an envelope here. This is a tag that I made with some stamping. This would be a great place to add a photograph or you can just keep it for journaling. Lots of laces. Here is a garment pin with a little squirrel charm on here. More either folding paper. I made these envelopes on a leaf pan the same way that I do with the heart shaped muffin pan. This one was a maple leaf. So that was a lot of fun. I used that throughout the journals too. And that just has some scrap paper with a little stamping on it. Another one of those pockets. Another leaf. This is a fun shop tag that my mom shared with me, so I shared two tracing paper, the side of that doily, and this is the third signature, and this is just a pocket that I made here. You could tuck something in here. This is a little pocket here, and then this would be an awesome place for photos or whatever you wanted to stick there. Little diamond paper clip. Here I used an old hand-stitched linen as a pocket on this page. Another double tuck pocket. Flip out envelope. More burlap and trims. There's a lot of trims in this book. I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> Another pocket. Here I just have a piece of Edith Holden book page with some poetry on it. Another photo mat. 
And here I have another garment pin with just a little charm on here. The other piece of that doily, stained doily here with a leaf and some trim. And here's the other side of that linen pocket. I just added some lace there. I'm always sticking these in my journals. I love this vintage ledger paper and vintage score sheet. So I clipped that on here. This I made out of an old table linen as well. This here in the front is a little tuck spot. And then on the other side, at the top, this is a pocket that you can stick some things in. So I sewed that together. I added some pretty laces and trims there. This was a piece of cross stitch that I had, so I cut out that little apple. I did that a few times in the journals. Another envelope pocket, and this just has some double-sided cardstock. It would make a great photo mat. Another buttoned leaf there. <laughs> More Edith Holden paper, a photo mat. And then the other side of that linen, which is also a pocket and a tuck spot. So that is the feed sack journal. You can see how this, there's enough here to wrap around a couple times. So the feed sack journal, and you can see that the laces and trims just poke out here. So beautifully, that is one of my favorite parts of these journals. All of the ink staining there. And then some ribbons at the top. Okay, as I'm sharing these journals, I'll probably speed through some of the pages that are very similar and just talk about the ones that I wanna talk about. So here I did the same closure with the chicken wire and the coffee stained seam binding. There's a little clip here. This journal is the same size. It's still made out of that feed sack, but it's just the white part. There's some bleed through from the ink stamping, which I think is so cool. Again, loving the harvest style of these journals. There are four signatures stitched in. This, for those of you who don't know, I looked it up, says harvester. It has this beautiful girl here. I'm sure that this image came from the old design shop. I will share that link down below, as I said. So I've done some machine stitching here. I added that net in the back with some burlap. I stitched it together really well so the burlap wouldn't fray at least more than like one piece because burlap frays, as you guys know. <laughs> so it's all stitched and adhered here. I hand stamped the word autumn. And then there's a wood veneer piece here. On the inside, I used more of the printed pieces of the feed sack, which I thought was fun. So then here in this journal, I used this table linen piece and added a pocket. So here is a bunch of hand stitching. I added a lace, a vintage button on a leaf. And then back here, I created this pocket. So there's a burlap front with some lace, there's a pocket here, and there's also a pocket back here. More Edith Holden paper. And then the pages that are similar, I'll just speed up a little bit. the back of that 
linen and you can see that it is also two pockets with another button and leaf here's another piece of that cross stitch and then here I didn't think of it in time before I made the first journal but on this journal I added some fabric tabs on these photo mats and I just think that fabric is so cute Another one of those tuck spots and pockets. This one has a little acorn clipped here on the side. Another pocket and tuck spot. third signature each journal has some of this leaf imprinted paper on it as well just love that maple leaf I think it's so much fun on here. here. I used a table linen again and I made a little pocket stitched onto the paper. And here's the pocket that I made for this journal. It has a little pocket here. Tuck it there. And that is the end of this journal. This one's pretty chunky, but it's mostly because I have the buttons in there. You could always take out some of the papers until you're ready to use them. And the last large journal same closure, same clip. Here I've used this other beautiful girl harvesting apples on the cover. Hand stamped autumn and put a fun little maple leaf here. Same layers of fabrics on top of the feed cloth. Same imagery, shadow. <laughs> Faint ghosting here on the back, four signatures. The inside, more of that feed sack. So then here for this pocket, I used a vintage table piece. I added this really fun vintage button here on the front. I lined the inside of the pocket with burlap and then just folded it up and then I tucked this little tag in here. This is a pocket here on the front. This is the only page that I had out of this book, but I loved the images of the leaves and the changing colors, so I added that in here. journal has a little maple leaf charm on the side. 
another maple leaf envelope. And then here's the other side of that book page, with summer leaves, and then a little bit about autumn leaves. Then here's the Anya girl in this journal, and this is a little packet. Here's the other side of this linen pocket at the end of the first signature, and I stuck another tag in here. Again, with the burlap backing, and then this is the second signature. Here's another table linen pocket here. Then here on this back signature, I made a pocket out of this table linen. So pretty. I added some trims here at the top and on the back. And then this is a pocket that you can just stick some items in. And then here is another garment pin with a little bead. back side of that pocket. Love those brown colors and the feed sack. And that is the end of this journal. Right, so then I have also created four Traveler's Notebook size journals. They measure eight and about an eight and a quarter tall and about four and a half inches wide. So I'll just get into these journals. This video doesn't take forever. Here I just, just used some coffee stain seam binding to tie them close. have this really pretty harvester girl here on the front. I've attached it the same way. There's a little bit of netting poking out there and some burlap wood veneer piece. This time I stitched the word autumn onto that coffee stain paper. This journal specifically is going to be slightly reduced in my shop because I'm a perfectionist and I don't like the fact that I screwed this up. I added the hole. There was nothing I could do about it. It still works just fine, it opens just fine, but I did booger that up a little bit, which doesn't make me happy. So this one's gonna be, have a little bit of a discount on it, but I'm just gonna get into the journal because this video. So here's all the little pretty laces and tabs poking out of this one. There's an acorn charm here on the side, and also a little butterfly dangle here. 
very similar to the other books. This one has a, this book belongs to. This one has a little Anya index card stuck in here. And then here on the back, I just clipped the cookie that's holding the page. So it made a little pocket. You could do that on the other journals too. So you didn't have to permanently glue it. You could use it. Again, I've mentioned it before. This would fit in your traveler's notebook, but you don't need a traveler's notebook to use these. They're beautiful by themselves. And here is the next journal. And again, these are so, so similar, so I'm just gonna flip through it quickly. Here is a bunny rabbit charm, and then a little butterfly dangle. Harvester girl with this pretty leaf with the mirror, some stitching and stamping. This journal has a little hot cider mug on the side, and then there's this pretty dangle here. not least another beautiful apple girl. This one has a maple leaf on the front.
time I have a little deer charm on here. I forgot to share that. A deer charm and then a little dangle. Finally, <laughs> that is it for my fall journals. I am so very excited to get these up and to share them because they have just been so much fun. I also wanted to mention real quick, for those of you who have been asking me, I am going to have a video pop up on my channel tomorrow where I share how I get the imprints on my paper. So I'll be sharing that with you. I'm also going to put a few sets of this paper in my Etsy shop as well for those of you who might be interested in picking some up. So I just wanted to mention that really quick. That's going to be in my shop as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if I haven't already, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!